Okay, hi guys, I'm JM, this is the Lotus Diaries. Today I'm doing a comparison video between the new Evora 400 and the previous generation Evora S Sports Racer. And the old Evora has now become known as the sort of S1. Now thanks in particular to the owner of this car, Stuart, who may be on camera in another video soon if I ask him nice enough. Now, Lotus say that the 400 is two thirds new. Now I'll be honest, when they told me that, I was one of these cynical types who thought, right, yeah, I know what you've done. You've changed the part number and you've painted it a different color and you've claimed it's a new part. But actually having got to know the car, both new and old, over a few weeks and few months of research, I can honestly start to believe their claim. They are quite different animals once you get down to it. But they do share a few common traits that mean if a 400 is out of your budget, then you are still going to have an excellent car if you go with the earlier model. Now, the most obvious difference from this angle is, of course, the front bumper. Now, I would make an educated guess that the front here and the roof is interchangeable between the two cars. Front, however, completely different. Now, Lotus say that the front is changed because the 400, in order to achieve its high horsepower figure, has a charge cooler in it. So there's a lot more water and stuff thrown through the system, and they have to cool that all down. So you've got a larger radiator setup at the front and larger grills to accommodate that. I think also they basically wanted the car to look a lot more aggressive, and I would say they've succeeded. Opinions are divided as to which looks better. Now with the older car, you've got the more classic looking Lotus front. You've got the sort of iconic little mouth that's appeared in most Lotus cars from the dawn of time. This particular car has also had this nice lip splitter fitted by its owner recently. That's an aftermarket part. Now you'll notice that this car is a very similar profile, similar width. Most of the key dimensions are the same. One thing about the early Evora is that when I was looking at them in pictures, I thought they looked a little bit soft, but I have to say, in the flesh, they look very sharp, very angular, very aggressive. They are really, really great looking cars. Yeah. It's from the side that it's basically hardest to tell the two apart, and that's where the least changes really have happened. You'll notice that the wing mirrors are a different design between the two, and you'll notice also that you can't really see the uh, front air intakes as much on the older car. Perhaps the biggest difference, and one that's telling about what Lotus's future plans are, is on the 400, you have reflectors on the front and rear of the car. Now those are explicitly for the US market and US regulations regarding reflectors on the side of the car. Now technically those do not at all need to be on a European specification car. However, I think Lotus have decided to save a little bit of money and make one molding for all cars globally I can forgive them for that. To be honest, it's probably one of the better integrations of a US spec reflector I've seen on a car. I've seen a lot of domestic market US cars which have done much worse jobs of putting them on there. So they've done what they can. I think some owners may want to fill them in or turn them into air intakes or something like that on the 400s, but it is one area where maybe the 400 isn't quite as nice. You will notice that the wheels on the two cars are different. Now I believe these are both wearing 19 front and 20 rears. The earlier Evoras had 18 fronts and 19 rears. You'll also notice, if you're being particularly observant, the different style of air intake. So they're in the same place and they're the same size, but on the older car, the mesh is right at the front and it's quite visible. Whereas on the 400, the mesh is much further back and where the sort of entrance to the engine bay is. Now coming around the back, you'll see again a fairly large difference between the two cars. So you'll see again that Lotus have tried to make the 400 much more aggressive, much more angular. In fact, standing here now with the two cars next to each other, I would almost say that it's the older car that looks wider. It is a bit smoother, it is perhaps a little bit more cohesive. There are a lot of guys that prefer the look of the older car. I personally prefer the look of the newer car because it's a little bit sharper, but it is a little bit busier as a result. You'll notice also that in the newer car, the reversing lights have been integrated into the light clusters, but on the older car, they are here. Now, this car has had the Lotus badging made black, which is quite a popular modification. You'll also notice this looks like it has a aftermarket diffuser. It doesn't. The diffuser on these cars, and this is something that came in with the sports pack and then became standard, does stick out a little bit, okay? This car being a sports racer, that was a fairly significant update for Lotus. 
They didn't change any of the fundamentals of the Evora, but what they did was they offered a lot of things that had previously been option packs, those were the Sport, the Tech and the Premium Pack, all as standard. So basically it was a way of Lotus offering the car with more features and a much better price. You can tell the early sports racer cars apart quite easily because the vast majority of them have what's now called the black pack. So it's a black roof and black side sills. You can get the sports racer in both S, which is supercharged, and naturally aspirated varieties. In the backs of the cars, you have basically the same amount of storage space available to you, whether you've got the older car or the newer car. There is a possibility the older car has a fraction more boot space, but it's not really significant enough to make your decision based solely on that. Now in the older cars, you do have this engine cover here. I do believe that that was ditched for the very last Evoras. Under here, of course, you have the engine. So you can see it is a different supercharger to the newer car. I can't remember who makes this one. Do you know who makes the supercharger in this one? Dead or Brock on the new one, can't remember. Anyway, so it is a different supercharger set up between the older car and the newer car. The new one is Edelbrock and the name of the old manufacturer escapes me. Now the power output on this car is 345 brake horsepower and the power output on the new car is obviously 400 brake horsepower. The difference was in a charge cooler which basically cools down the air. It works, does the same job as an intercooler effectively but achieves its results in a slightly different manner. The torque figures between these two cars are almost identical. This is 295 pound-feet, that is 302.5. Why they felt the need to cling on to that last half a pound-foot, I don't know. But you can't really feel the speed difference between the two at low RPM. The peak torque on the newer car does come in 1,000 RPM earlier, but I've driven them back to back and it's not a blindingly obvious difference. All of the power difference really is felt when you're pressing on and when you're using the higher portions of the rev range. Now inside are where perhaps the most significant updates were made. So I have donned my very fetching helmet cam so we can give you a driver's eye view of the two cars. Now, this is the sports racer. The sports racer has a different trim for the Recaro seats. These ones are in venom red. A lot of them are specced in the opposite color scheme to this. So they are black seats with red piping. This car has a lot of Alcantara trim stuff in the middle. It does also have space for back seats in the back, but the carpet has been removed from this particular car to give you a bit more room. And this is one area that was addressed in the 400, that they have made the rear a lot more spacious. You'll notice the child seat because this is, believe it or not, a family car, if you have a small family. So hopping in the car, you'll notice the larger, thicker and higher sills. Now I don't find getting in the old Evora difficult at all compared to the new one. It is much, much easier than an Elise or an Exige, but if you had limited movement or if you have the seat quite far forward, you're probably going to appreciate the difference with the new car. So pull the door shut. The older car feels like a much, much more intimate place to be. This one does have a steering wheel from a 400, just to point that out. Now it feels like this car is half the size inside. My knee is touching the door, which it doesn't do in the 400. The dashboard, this one again Alcantara, it feels like everything's kind of sunk. It feels like the dash comes much closer towards you. The switch gear is totally different. Now this is a very controversial area between owners of Evora's new and old. One other thing worth pointing out, the pedal box in here is really, really tight. There's not much room. Now you can see over here, if you can hopefully just see down there, my feet are kind of stuffed in there. It's very, very small. Now, the switches in this car are made all from metal, from brushed aluminium, which a lot of guys quite like. Unfortunately, where they've chosen to put the switches in this car, now bear in mind this camera is mounted on the left side of my head and not where my eyes are. Let me put you where my eyes are, there. You can't see any of the switches, which is a bit useless because you're kind of driving along. You're trying to, if you want to, if you've never been in one of these, I'm sure if you've been in it for a while and owned it for a while, you'll get to know it, and it's dead easy to uh, to drive. But getting in it and wanting to push something, I have no idea where anything is. Where's the support mode button? I know is it is it down there? No, it's not down there. Oh, oh, it's down here. Okay, great. So I can push it, and it's wonderful. Now the gear lever is the same. The gear linkage has been radically revised between the new and old cars. 
and the new one is much much better the owner of this particular car tells me that the car is generally well behaved but occasionally if you want to rush it it can disagree with you the 400 i've had no such complaints with you do have an armrest in this car which i really really like so i do like an armrest they have deleted it from the newer car which is annoying a stereo is another alpine unit but is a slightly older one uh, these switches as well have changed from metal in this car to plastic in the new one i personally prefer the newer items overall it's a very high quality feeling place but you can tell where the improvements have been made and to be honest the major improvement is in the size stakes it feels like a much much larger car the new one compared to the old one here the dash in this wraps around you i suppose some people would like that but for me it just it's it's nice having a bit more space a bit more room the gauges in this car, I haven't really spent much time driving one of these, but a lot of people have reported issues with basically the sun washing out the gauges. I can say that the dials on the new car are much improved. They're both easy to read when it's not too sunny, but yeah, so it's quite different. So I'll hop in the 400 to show you quite how different it is. Okay, so now into the 400, which you'll see is pretty different. So you have a much lower a narrower sill but Lotus have not compromised in any way the torsional stiffness of it this really genuinely feels like a completely different car in here if I pull the door to you can see that it no longer wraps around you but the difference is that I have a huge amount of space notice here there's a good couple of inches room between myself and the door handle in the other car I was touching it so we have different dash gauges it's the same sort of layout but the cowl comes over much further to help protect the light and all of the switches now they are plastic now which a lot of the guys don't like i can appreciate that but they are now much more intuitively laid out much easier to get to nothing is hidden everything is easily accessible light switches and stuff down here engine start button which i don't like this is something the 400s gained i'm not a fan of engine start buttons when you've got a normal key you'll recognize the gear knob and you've got your switches here again they've changed but loads and loads more room in here and you've got a lot more room in the back as well different design of seats now uh, some people have said that they feel that they fit higher in the newer car i think well i've measured and you sit basically the same height in both i think in both cars you feel like you sit generally a little too high so i'm going to look into ways of lowering the seat uh, opinions about which seat is better than you or the old now if you sat in the back the new one is definitely better because there is space under you for passengers feet to go uh, there is apparently 30 centimeters that is a foot for you american guys more room for rear passengers side to side for guys with car seats that want to put them in the car that is massively massively helpful it's a huge huge difference okay so yeah that's the sort of differences between the two cars um, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and look out for my interview with Stuart, the owner of the lovely white SR, who's over there. It's ridiculous. Like they put all the stuff, all the money went in the kind of yeah, right places and stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, and the engine's great as well. There's nothing wrong with the engine. It's fine. Yeah. Like it gets a hammering because it's from a Camry, but it's like, who gives a shit? Like, that's it. Sorry, I'm basically like, there's a joke that goes like, like what's the difference between cameramen and prostitutes? And so basically, like, they both spend all night standing outside in the rain, but the prostitute occasionally gets to go inside and warm up. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's how we see ourselves. We're just, we're just whores, amazingly, uh, on shit money.